Moran. Chairman Sheen, thank you. Um, let me uh, visit with you uh, for a moment, uh, Attorney General, about AI and our national security risks. Yeah. Um, both Congress and the Department of Justice are grappling with uh, the opportunities and threats that are presented by the rapid development of artificial intelligence. Uh, two months ago, the department appointed its first chief AI officer. Um, yesterday, my colleagues and I, we were in, in a letter trying to bring the risk of AI to the attention of uh, other colleagues of ours. We specifically are targeting the potential catastrophic risks associated with the use of AI in the development of biological chemical, cyber, and nuclear weapons. Uh, I'm looking for uh, assurance that the department uh, has, is, and will pay sufficient attention to these extraordinary threats to our national security. And uh, I would welcome your thoughts about uh, what's happening with the, in the new AI office, as well as other DOJ components with national security responsibilities. Uh, what, what's happening to consider and mitigate the national security risks and other catastrophic risks created by AI. Yes, uh, so AI has both promise and incredible peril for us. Um, and uh, as is often the case in the beginning, uh, offense uh, beats defense here. And uh, we are very concerned about uh, the way AI can be used uh, um, for everything from uh, mimicking uh, normal uh, conversations in text and therefore uh, advancing uh, the ability uh, to do phishing expeditions by getting passwords from people, um, by um, um, using their social media um, to uh, uh, appear as if they are a friend, um, and uh, likewise uh, just plain hacking and constantly and repetitive hacking in a way that clicking on the keyboard um, uh, will seem very uh, 20th century. Uh, so we are extremely uh, concerned about that. AI has some um, possibilities also for defense. Uh, instead of having to defend uh, constantly with uh, human uh, actors, uh, someday we hope to be able to develop an AI def uh, defense to the cyber attacks that you're talking about. This does require us to enhance our AI capabilities. That's why I uh, recruited um, the, the AI um, 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 head that you're uh, talking about. Uh, he's a, uh, a PhD in computer science who teaches computer science at Princeton, got his PhD in Stanford. We are looking to hire as many people with those kind of qualifications uh, as are possible. Um, and that's why we're asking for uh, the money that we're asking for specifically with respect to cyber. We're asking in this budget for $894.6 million, which is an 11.9% increase in our cyber crime combat and a $432.9 million uh, increase specifically with respect to cybersecurity, which is 15.6% increase. Thank you for highlighting those. Um, let me turn to a different topic. Last week I was disturbed, disturbed to see a NBC News report that an individual on the terrorist watch list had been detained by the Border Patrol on the southern border and then promptly released. The facts of this case are complex, they're nuanced, but uh, according to the report, when the de detainee appeared before the immigration judge, the D DHS attorneys did not inform the judge of the potential terrorist ties, despite having received that warning from the FBI. The judge ultimately ordered the detainee to be released. I, I don't expect you to be able to uh, respond to the actions of the Department of Homeland Security, but again, I would look for assurances that through the FBI, the Terrorist Screening Center, the immigration courts uh, are taking the necessary steps to ensure suspected terrorists are not simply released into the country. You talked about in the increasing terrorist threat to our country. Uh, my last trip to the border, there were nationals, Chinese nationals who were apprehended in my presence. Uh, I see this as a significant threat, and I just want really to highlight this issue to the FBI and to the Department of Justice, making sure that you're doing your job. Yes, uh, the FBI's job, um, and they take it extremely seriously, is when they learn information about somebody who has been able to pass through the border, uh, to follow that person, to deter that person, to disrupt that person, and to arrest that person where we can. Uh, in the example that you're talking about, that person has since been detained. Um, and we are um, constantly in discussions with uh, um, 
the um, Department of Homeland Security about, about how to improve the processes um, between uh, Homeland Security and the immigration courts um, and at the border with respect to uh, terrorist screening. Thank you, General. Senator Heinrich. 